What's up guys, so today we're going to be having a look at the D1 Milano Atlas. This is obviously a watch that's paying homage to the Nautilus by Patek Philippe. It's a watch uh, by an Italian micro brand that I'm not sure if you can really call them a micro brand because they are really, really active on social media. They have a really big presence on social media and I'm guessing they do produce quite a lot of watches. However, let's start by showing you this box. It comes in a nice gift box kind of presentation. Uh, once you actually get this ribbon off and you take the top off, then it's pretty much just a cardboard box with a watch on the inside nothing too special there keep in mind that this is retailing for around 545 euros at the time of making this review now some of the technical specifications are 41.5 millimeter case size case thickness of 11 millimeters so it's quite a thin watch it's got a stainless steel bracelet sapphire crystal a Seiko NH35 movement yeah Seiko NH35 movement in a over 500 euro watch is never a good thing uh, then it has 50 meters of water resistance now looking at the dial I mean there's not an awful lot to look at it's a pretty simple dial you've got some applied indices highly polished you've got some highly polished minute and hour hands and you've got that orange seconds hand which I quite like as it pays a, a good amount of contrast with the dial which is a kind of royal navy blue and you've got that in um, minute and second track on the outmost part of the dial. Now, you've got pretty much everything else printed onto the dial, so not much to talk about there. The case shape is obviously, as I mentioned, paying homage to the Nautilus, so you know what to expect. You've got this screw down crown, which kind of looks like a bolt. It's, it's, it's pretty, it's good looking, but it's not a, a useful design to be able to actually um, utilize the crown of this watch. It does take a bit of effort to be able to screw it, to screw it back down, and it's just not a comfortable crown at all. It's just not a comfortable experience. However, the clicks to be able to get into the a time adjustment or the date setting is a very secure, so there's no real complaints in terms of it wiggling about or anything it's just that I would have much rather they'd gone for a more traditional design however I understand that they tried to stay in, in line with the case design so I understand why they did it but just keep in mind that it's not that easy to use now if you look at it from the side you can tell that it's got a different um, a few different uh, finishings you've got um, that brushed finish on the sides of the case and then you've got high polish almost mirror polish on those edges of what would be the bezel at the top you also have these kind of cut out sections where you typically have them uh, the crown guards so i think that the case is is good looking i mean it's definitely a good looking watch and if you look at some of the other d1 milano pieces you'll see that these guys obviously know how to make a good looking piece however there are a few things like the fit and finish of the case and the bracelet that I think for 545 euros is a bit subpar to be honest. For example, the finishing on those edges is quite sharp. I understand that they've gone for that kind of really rough, aggressive look, but it's quite sharp, so it does tend to pinch into your wrist now and then. And then we have this bracelet, and the bracelet looks really, really good. It tapers down, I'm not sure to what size, but it does taper down quite a bit as you can see there and it plays with the light in a really really nice way however it has just a, a completely nonsensical a clasp mechanism because there's no pusher there's no pusher there's no button there's no way to actually get this clasp open other than just having to brute force your way through it which can be a, a bit difficult at the best of times. A, quite a few times I've found myself actually getting a, a scratched and scraped actually trying to open this clasp because once again the edges of this bracelet are quite sharp just as the edges of the case are. And not only that but you have to close one side first because the other one has that little D1 Milano um, piece that goes on top of the other bracelet so it has to be 
in one side first and then the other one if not you won't be able to close it i just don't understand why they went for this design i mean it looks streamlined because it doesn't have any pushers but at the end of the day if you compare it for example to the butterfly clasp on the spectre phantom 2 that i reviewed a few weeks ago it's just so much easier so much nicer to have something like that and personally i don't really care about having a, a bit of extra a material on the clasp especially when it adds that extra functionality and it makes it a much easier experience to take the watch on and off. Now, one thing I really do like is the profile of this watch. It's a really thin watch. It has that nice solid case pad. I'm happy they went for a solid case pad and not a display case pad, but with a Seiko NH35 movement, it's obviously nothing to look at. So it's definitely classier that they went this route. And then you have that flat sapphire crystal with quite a good amount of anti-reflective coating on it, so you're not going to get that much blur. And then you can also see how the bezel plays with the light. I mean, there's no mistake in it. This is a very, very attractive piece. As I said, the dial is very simple. The bracelet has a very, very difficult to use clasp mechanism. Here, the crown isn't exactly the easiest to actuate, but this is a very good looking piece. And the way it plays with the light, because of all these different finishings, especially on the bracelet and the bezel, it's just gorgeous. It looks very good on a wrist as well as out. So, I mean, in terms of the actual appearance i can't really complain about it because it is a very good looking watch however however in terms of value for money i mean you get a printed dial with some applied indices you get uh, not exactly the higher standard of fit and finish you get a seiko nh35 movement you get a pretty a uh, pretty disappointed uh, unboxing experience which some people don't care about i personally do especially if we're looking about uh, 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 these kind of prices so for 545 euros i mean there's just so much competition for this watch there's just so many different pieces including the spectre time in um, phantom 2 that i reviewed a few weeks ago which has a similar style in order that more is that that's more in, in line with all the mass pga or iwc however for this price, I just can't recommend this watch because I think it's it's been overpriced. I mean, honestly, I'd be happy to pay half of that amount, but I just can't see any way of justifying over 500 euros for this watch. As good looking as it may be, the value, in my opinion, just isn't there. Maybe if they threw in a Swiss movement, that would change. So we'll see what they do in the future. Anytime, anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the review. Till the next time, peace.